From Carson, California, the MCU Sports Network presents NAIA Women's College Soccer, the Simpson University Red Hawks versus the Marymount California University Mariners. Hi everyone, alongside Rob Abreu, I'm David Smock. Welcome to field number five here at the SubHub Center and the site of tonight's CalPAC conference game. And a very important one, Rob, you know, MCU, they've won five out of the last six games and they're really trying to strive for one of those four playoff berths. They're in a three-way tie for second place and can't overhype the importance of this match tonight. That's right, you don't want to be overconfident coming in right before the playoffs and slip up and lose that coveted playoff spot. So very important for MCU to lock up that final spot and get a victory here tonight. And of course, Simpson, they, they've had some problems this year. Uh, definitely not maybe the season they wanted, but, but somebody who could be one of those spoilers. And we, we see it all the time in sports. This is a game that makes Simpson dangerous. And if you're MCU, that's the last thing you want to do is overlook a conference opponent who's going to be ready to play. And so it's the Red Hawks and the Mariners coming up next right here on the MCU Sports Network. Visiting with Rebecca Messer of Simpson University, but a local hometown connection you actually went to and graduated from San Pedro High School. Yeah. So what was it like there playing? You said you played soccer only your senior year. What was that like being a pirate uh, for that one season? Um, it was really different. I wasn't expecting to go back to soccer. I'd quit a couple years ago to spend more time with my mom because um, she worked a lot. But going back, it was neat to be a part of the team. It's a pretty rough culture up in Pedro. I don't know if you're familiar with that. But it was nice to be a part of the team and um, just be able to travel and play hard. I love defense. And so you just go out strong and you're playing with a tough team and it's, it's really nice. Now, you went from San Pedro High School, you end up at Simpson University. How did that come about? Well, I was definitely not planning on that. I was planning on staying in the South Bay. Um, but my mom ended up finding out about it on her anniversary. And I went up there, and I was just really struck by how passionate the school was for the Lord and for enabling people to go out and do missions, which is what I wanted to do. And it turns out that they had a great soccer team, and the girls were so welcoming. We got, you know, yogurt together and went to movies, and I just felt a part of the team just right going up there, and it was just really awesome. Now, in your bio, it mentions that you enjoy finding restaurants here in the South Bay. Let's talk about that. What's your favorite <laughs> restaurant, and how do you go about finding some of the really uh, great places to eat here in the South Bay? Well, I love Thai food, and so my dad and I always find the best places to go, and Tasty Siam on uh, Palos Verdes Drive North and Western is the best place in the South Bay to go for Thai food. Um, so it's just a great way to spend time with my dad and get some good food. Now, you also mentioned coffee is kind of the same thing. Are you searching for coffee or just like to drink it? Well, coffee just brings community. I mean, you can just go to a coffee shop with someone and get to know them, and so I love tasting new kinds of coffee, and we have an espresso machine at my house, so all through the summer I'm just making espresso after espresso and trying different things, and I really enjoy it. Now, what do you want to do after graduation? What's kind of like your, your dream job? What do you hope to uh, pursue after the uh, diploma? To be honest, I just want to spend my life serving people and helping people, and I don't necessarily want a comfortable life. I know sometimes it can be kind of easy here in the South Bay to place a lot of focus on material things, but um, I just want you know, people to know the Lord. I want people to just have hope, and I just, I've lived here for so long, and people have a lot of stuff, but they don't have a lot of hope, and so I just want to bring that to people and share the love of Christ and His peace. Rebecca, thanks for the visit. Good luck tonight. All right. Thank you. Our guest is Dan Anderson, the head coach of Simpson University. First of all, coach, it's been kind of a rough season for your Red Hawks, but let's talk a little bit about, first of all, the breakdown of your players, starting with your defenders. Uh, defensively, we have a lot of um, a lot of depth, at, and luckily we do that, have that because we've had several injuries. We had a couple of ACL tears and then some rolled ankles, which has really been hampering us uh, on this road trip, really. But I got one back today who she should be ready and healthy to go. So. Um, defensively, we're looking a little bit more solid. And we're, we switched up the formation the way we normally play to help uh, counteract some of the injuries we've had this season. Let's take a look and talk about your uh, midfielders. Midfield, um, we have 
we play five in the so we play a four or five uh, one. So we have five midfielders that we usually play with the three center midfielders who are all uh, pretty good. Two of them seniors that are uh, twin sisters actually, Nicole and Natalie Goins, who um, anchor really anchor that midfield for us. And then our wingers, Kaylee Lamori, is a really fast threat down the the left wing. Um, so we're pretty. We're pretty solid in the middle as well, and when we get it going, playing, uh, we're playing well together. Uh, we actually, uh, and playing to feet, we play really well. But it's just a matter of getting everything clicking, clicking together. What about your goalkeeper? Who's in goal tonight? Our goalkeeper is Natasha Webb. Uh, she is also a senior. This is her third year striding for us. Um, she's from the first time I saw her. She's improved an incredible amount. She's works harder than anybody else on the team. She, I mean, you couldn't ask for anything more out of a goalkeeper on your team. So what's kind of your scouting report about MC? What do you know about the Mariners? Uh, we played them once this year. Um, it was early on in the season for us. We were still um, still trying to get um, get our feet like on the ground and get running on the season. They're a very talented team, uh, but I expect us to compete a little bit better than we did earlier this season. Uh, and, but if we don't come out and play our game, they're a type of team that can really, um, really score a few goals on us. So um, we're hoping to play the way we can because if we don't, uh, it could be, could be a long night for us. But I expect us to come out strong tonight and put up a good performance against them and get a win. Yeah, you obviously have some taller players, but we notice you have about ten players, five three, five uh, three and under, including four ten. Does that height uh, a disadvantage? Uh, it can be, uh, depending on the player. Um, well, Kira Navard is one of those players but who is short, but she doesn't think she's short. She goes out there and plays, and doesn't matter who she's going up against. She'll play tall and, up, uh, and physical with those players, and they just have – usually their work ethic can kind of offset that. So I don't think for us it's a huge disadvantage, but it can at times just because of the size. It can be a disadvantage, but I don't think it really hampers us to a point where it's a huge detriment to our team. Coach, thanks for the visit. Good luck tonight. Thank you a lot. Coach, you've won five out of the last six games. All of a sudden, you're in the hunt for one of those uh, playoff berths, currently tied for second place with two other teams. Really, what's been the, the key turnaround here in the last couple of games? Um, I'd have to say that our, our team's just starting to finally, it's all clicking. You know, the team's starting to really work together, and uh, we're, trying to, we're finding the back of the net a lot better than we had in the past, and so it's starting to work for us. Any, any changes in the lineup tonight going up against Simpson? Uh, we have a couple of changes, yeah, but uh, nothing too de too drastic. Uh, players that have been earning their keep are, are getting a reward tonight. And well, Speaking of keep, who's in the, who is the goalkeeper tonight? Uh, we have Andrea uh, Poschel playing in tonight, which we're looking forward to. She's uh, played against them last time and got the shutout, so we know she's capable of it. You still have a few key games down the stretch, and then, of course, the, the postseason tournament in Prescott, Arizona. Is this something your team's really kind of focusing on, getting enough points and get one of those top four spots? Absolutely. That's been our goal all season. That's uh, been the focus since, since we got here this year. And Courtney, good luck tonight. <laughs> Visiting with Andrea Fairber of Marymount California University, the current CalPAC Conference Co-Player of the Week. And first of all, congratulations. Thank you. Now, lately, you've been scoring a lot of goals. What's kind of basically allowing you to do that? What's a little bit different now in these uh, last several games? Well, we tried to play forward, and we did that pretty well. So I think that was one of the m most reasons why I scored more goals. Yeah. And you've won five out of your last six games, so you're really off to a, a very strong start after maybe a little rocky beginning at the start of the season. Well, we did pretty well now, so I don't know what we'd change, but it's working, and I hope we can keep it up. So playoffs, we're coming. Now, you're from Europe. What, what is your hometown? Zurich. That's yeah, in Switzerland. Switzerland. So coming from Zurich, Switzerland to Southern California, how did that come about? Well. It was always a dream of mine to play soccer in America, so I went to a tryout in London and the former soccer coach at Marymount College, they offered me a scholarship, so that's why I'm here now. I don't like living in the Los Angeles area. It's really cool. I like the weather, so it's like never raining. Yeah. What else is kind of like your favorite thing, maybe something you didn't expect before coming here that you found out about Southern California that you really like? I really like the beach and hanging out there and just tanning and I like the school because it's small 
and the view. Yeah, that's all. And what do you want to do after you're done playing soccer here? What's kind of like your future goal and plans in life? I really don't know what I want to become, but I'm starting with biomed, so I'm going to try to go to med school or anything like that. So, But I'm not sure exactly what I want to do. Andrew, thanks for the visit. Good luck tonight. Thank you. We are set for soccer here at field number five as the teams in their final huddle before the opening kickoff. Taking a look at the California Pacific Conference standings coming into this contest. Marymount California University in a three-way tie for second place. William Jessup is in first place. And for the Mariners, they are seven and five overall in the year. Four and two in conference play. While well, Simpson, they are two and ten in the 2013 campaign. Zero and six in conference play. Simpson will kick off. They are in the black uniforms, trimmed in red and white. As the Red Hawks start things off, and for Marymount California University, they are in the gold uniform, gold jerseys with blue shorts. We were told they were going to wear all blue, but evidently they made a Game time decision to go ahead and break out the gold jerseys and, and Rob possibly because of a night game makes it a little easier to identify the players out there individually. You know, those yellow jerseys definitely stand out here under the very dark Southern California night here. So just underway. After this contest, the Mariners will kind of hit the road a little bit. They'll have one more home contest. And again, trying to secure one of those four playoff berths in the upcoming California Pacific Conference postseason tournament. That'll be hosted by Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University down in Prescott, Arizona. The Marymount California University men's team, they're currently in first place in the South Division, and it looks like one more win for them, and they will punch their ticket for Prescott. And right now, Rob, just kind of seems both teams may, mainly kind of playing keep away at this point. Yeah, a little bit of the feeling out process here early on. Uh, you might want to consider this almost a trap game for Marymount, California. You know, once we get into the middle of conference play, both teams are now established. Marymount towards the middle of the conference, Simpson on the lower end, and this is generally where teams begin to overlook and look ahead. This is the second meeting of the year between these two clubs. They already played once at Simpson University, which is located in Redding, California. And that was a game that the Mariners won. Of course, very important for the Mariners to defend their home turf here as we move later into conference play. Yeah, they played very well, and of course, this is the end of a seven game homestand where right now they are five and one trying to see if they can close out six and one. Uh, they have not played quite as well on the road and that's something that they're going to need to improve upon not only in these last couple of games when they head back out for some away matches but also in the Cal Pack tournament in Prescott. In goal tonight for Simpson University is 5'5 senior goalkeeper Natasha Webb from Freeland, uh, Washington, and Andrea, uh, Andrea Poschel, 6'1 junior goalkeeper from Bakersfield out of Grasses Memorial High School, is defending for Marymount, California tonight. Just about three minutes gone here in the uh, first half, no score. Looks like Marymount now beginning to put the pressure on here very early in this first half. Well, in the last match, 
that was shown right here on the MCU Sports Network. Again, Soka University of America. It seemed like almost the entire match took place on the far third of the field, and we had not really seen that. A little header there that's handled easily by Polschel, and Polschel will put the ball back into play as she kicks it downfield over onto the near side. Number 12, Kelsey Nash there with the header opportunity. They track down the ball and move it around is Jasmine Jimenez. She gets it over to Kelsey Nash and now battle for possession and it's going to be handled. Anyway, we have a mystery player out there tonight wearing number one. We'll have to check on that at halftime. I was not on the roster that we were given for MCU. And now the ball, I think that one's going to go out of bounds. Trying to track it down was uh, Bethany Len, 5'6", junior defender from Blaine, Washington. That's right up near the Canadian border into Washington State in the beginning of the province of British Columbia. Simpson trying to see if they get something going. As mentioned in our pregame show, there are 10 players on this Simpson University Red Hawk roster at five foot, three inches tall or shorter. But their coach, Dan Anderson, he doesn't think that's a problem. As a restart here coming up by MCU. And this one's going to go right in front of the box, off the hands of Webb. It's already two shots on goal for Marymount. Simpson can't afford to yeah, allow to get Marymount it. to put the pressure on. Right. Well, and just like we've seen with the Marymount California University men's soccer team, the Mariners women's soccer team, it's all about ball control, trying to keep the ball in the attacking half of the pitch. Dave, we, we talked, you mentioned earlier about the height, the lack of height. Up on this Simpson roster really comes into play on these corner kicks. Corner kick, and off the leg of a Mariner, and now trying to be cleared out, but boy, I tell you, that was dangerous. And now this ball is just going to be kicked out of bounds. Throw in coming up by Jasmine Jimenez for the Mariners, and she throws the right into Kelsey Nash and back to Jimenez. He's over in the... Our mystery middle, player. Yeah, our mystery player wearing number maybe one Maybe it's tonight. the gold jerseys. They, they, they came out with the surprise with the gold jerseys and maybe didn't have her number. Again, another shot on goal. Yeah, that one handled by Natasha Webb. And a 5'5 junior goalkeeper from Freeland, Washington. It's I spent some time in Washington State finishing college uh, in Tacoma. And I'll be honest, I've not heard of Freeland. It's F-R-E-E-L-A-N-D. Ball comes over the near side to Loya. Loya gets around one defender. Loya now will kick it back. This one going back to Maddie Maurer. But Rob, you were going to make a point? No, I was going to say that, you know, we talked about ball control and the strategy. And right now, Marymount, California is just dominating the ball. And really, Simpson can continue this pace and allowing Marymount to control the ball if they want to stay in this game, or else it's going to get away from them very quickly. David Smock and Rob Abreu, along with our camera operator, Robert Linkrum. Great to be with you tonight on the MCU Sports Network. Under the lights, our first night game. And again, we're here at field number five on the StubHub Center campus. Right next door is California State University, Dominguez Hills. And now the Red Hawks trying to move the ball a little bit forward, trying to track it down, chasing Leo Halloran. But O'Halloran will see the ball go out of bounds before she can get to it. And a very quick throw in by the Mariners. 37 minutes and 25 seconds to go in the first half. Simpson University and Marymount California University, no score. Simpson has the ball. It's important for them to maintain control and not turn it over, which they do. Of course, giving it back to Marymount, which is continuing just to put the pressure on here in the first half. Pass from... Nash to Loya, and Loya loses control, being guarded very closely by Leah O'Halloran. O'Halloran, 5'3", sophomore defender from Newburgh, Oregon. So O'Halloran doing a good job on defense. Jasmine Jimenez will 
throw the ball in, and we'll wait to see what the referee has called time. And I think what they're concerned about is maybe some little kids playing down in the corner of the field, kind of down at the other end. It's and a crowded it's, field here. Tonight. Yeah. <laughs> a lot going on. Yeah, and a youth academy game taking place here between uh, Chivas USA and the Los Angeles Galaxy that uh, really is probably drawn, I'm going to say, a good 300, 400 fans and also quite a few fans here tonight for this contest as play resumes. And Loya trying to get it over towards the goal mouth, but O'Halloran has just been all over Loya. It's a battle to keep your eye on. Loya has been very active so far here tonight. So Again, the ball, Fairber with the ball. She's the co-CCAA, or check that, co-CalPAC conference, one conference, <laughs> co-CalPAC conference player of the week. Nice job there by Maddie Maurer. Trying to move the ball forward, trying to get it to Ferber. Ferber turns and kicks. That one's going to be handled easily, grabbed in the air by Natasha Webb. Boy, Marymount, California's Jenna Fisher with the shake and bake, breaking ankles like a basketball crossover out there. Very good footwork by these players at NAIA level. You know, sometimes NAIA doesn't get quite the, the same respect as NCAA, but, you know, again, these ladies are out here working just as hard as their NCAA counterparts, whether it be Division Three, Division Two, or even Division One. I believe like conferences such as the CalPAC, GSAC, they usually get a lot of Division I tra transfers, so really the talent out here is as good as any as you're going to find. In a battle for control. And now an opportunity for Loya, but she's not going to be able to track it down in time, I don't believe, before it goes out of bounds. And they're going to call offsides anyway, so it doesn't matter. 34-53 to play here in the first half. Simpson and Marymount, California. No score at the StubHub Center in Carson. No score, but definitely very dominant performance so far for Marymount, California. Again, the Mariners, we mentioned, have won five out of six. They'd like to wrap up this homestand winning six out of seven. Nash has the ball and has kicked downfield by Natalie Goins. And a good one-on-one, -on -one. and there and finally get some help for um, Dangerous. Andrea Poschel. Yeah, Poschel there. All of a sudden, it was almost a one-on-one -on -one break, and I think Poschel, you know, she's kind of uh, crying out for some help. So now the Mariners will come back the other way in case you're just joining us. Simpson University, the Red Hawks in all black trimmed in red and white, and the Mariners in gold uniforms and navy blue shorts. Loya trying to kick the ball in the middle. Well, that one's going to be knocked away by Natalie Goins. Now kicked over on the other side by Marika, or Marika to hoop. And you and called Mariners out get it right back. You called out Goins' names. And if Simpson's going to have a chance for an upset here tonight, it's definitely got to have to come from Natalie and Nicole Goins, these two girls, both leading the team in goals, and Nicole also leading the team in assists. They are twins, but not identical twins. They're actually fraternal twins. And Natalie Goins is 5'3". And we'll get the height on Nicole. Like I said, uh, well actually, Natalie Goins is 5'6", and her sister Nicole is 5'3". So right right there you get a height difference. That you normally don't see, with, obviously, with identical twins. Jenna Fisher with the ball. That stripped of it. And this is just going to be kind of kicked in the corner, and Natasha Webb will gather it up. This is my first time seeing Jenna Fisher play, and I gotta say she has pre some pretty amazing ball handling skills as she's weaving in and out of defenders. Maybe got a little bit too greedy on that last drive. Yeah, Lamori stripped of the ball by Jasmine Jimenez, but it's intercepted right back. But picking it up is Monica Fisher. She drops it off onto the far side to Kelsey Nash, and saving the ball from going out of bounds, Mackenzie Collard.
Quick throw in for the Mariners right in front of the Simpson University bench. Again, I just get the feeling that it's inevitable that we're going to see a Marymount, California goal here soon if Simpson isn't able to turn the field. Jasmine Jimenez tracking down the ball before it went out of bounds, tries to kick it in front of the goal mouth, but a couple of defenders there representing Simpson, and the Red Hawks kick the ball out of bounds. Again, Dave, we talked about the lack of height on the Simpson roster. This is where it comes back to hurt them. Marymount, California can get a ball here up in the air. A header opportunity will yeah, present long, itself. Long throw in. But for the moment, it's going to be... Now we're going to see a corner Controlled. Kick. Yeah, I was going to say... They, this would be the second corner kick in the half. I believe that's Monica Fisher, number 11. Or am I mistaken, Dave? Well, I think it may have been Maddie Maurer. We heard one of the parents. But anyway, ball back in play. Jimenez gets it over on the far side. Collard kicks it towards the goal. And now a lot of players in front of, there of the ball, almost like a pinball. This one comes over the other side to Monica Fisher. Fisher's left-handed kick, Ellen's going to be wide left, and another corner kick coming up for Mon uh, Marymount California University. Marymount's just chipping away here, slowly and surely, and very methodical. So this would be Andrea Fairber with the corner kick for the Mariners. I want to go out of bounds once more. Surprised there wasn't more lift on that ball. Yeah, I think that's what she wanted to do. Of course, that always becomes very dangerous with headers, etc. But it looks like they're going to award Marymount, California, another corner kick that Fairbur will put into play. And this one with more lift on it, as you mentioned, Rob. And just kind of cleared the goal mouth. Looks like a couple of players went up to try to head it in, but just missed. And Simpson University dodges a bullet there. I still like the placement of that ball. I think that's a higher percentage play for Marymount, California. Again, just really knocking on the door here in the first half. Trying to go for a header was Alyssa Loya. Now in front of the goal mouth, but really nobody there to poke it in. Although Kelsey Nash will take a go of it and it's high over the goal. That was Kelsey a 45, Nash. 45 yard field goal attempt. Yeah, Kelsey Nash, a 5'7 senior midfielder from nearby Torrance out of Torrance High School and a transfer from Nichols State University to Marymount, California. And now the ball back into play. Dangerous play by Simpson. Off Aloya. Again, ball going out of bounds. 28 minutes and 33 seconds to play in the first half. The Simpson University Red Hawks and the Marymount California University Mariners no score at the StubHub Center in Carson. Marymount's on pace for double digit corner kicks in the first half. Yeah, this would be at least their fifth. We've kind of blocked out a little bit, but I think it's Monica Fisher who's gonna take this one. Again, open in the goal mouth. And uh, shot, that one's not going to be anywhere close to the net. Some of these Marymount shots are out from a little bit of a distance. Maybe due, due to some of the inaccuracies, I'd like to see them maybe get a little bit closer. Again, maybe lift that ball up in there and get some more header opportunities. That was Monica Fisher, by the way, on the corner kick. I find it interesting that they have Leah O'Halloran kicking as opposed to the goalkeeper, Natasha Webb. Now I see Loya with the ball, and she passes it to a teammate right back to Loya, but it goes out of bounds. That is interesting. Really, 90%, 99% of the time you see the keeper usually kick that ball out. 
Sometimes they get tired, but I think they, they might feel that O'Halloran has a better leg than Natasha Webb. And now the throw in for the Red Hawks. Now Simpson has control and possession. Let's see what they do with it. Yeah, I was about ready to say the same thing. And now the other thing too, and, and you did not see our last women's soccer telecast with Soka uh, recently on the MCU Sports Network, but that almost entire game was on the far third of the field uh, over near the team benches. And we were wondering if that was something because of, of Soka's style of play. As tracking down the ball is Kaylee Lamori, and, and Lamori gets it right back, and now quick throw in by Jasmine Jimenez who gets it into Monica Fisher but we're already seen in this game kind of a spread out so I think that was probably more of a soca style of soccer play as opposed to you know maybe Marymount California we had not seen that for Marymount so far this season and one of the rare times that the ball has been on the left side of the pitch yeah, with the exception of just a few, a couple of breakout opportunities, really just, it's been all Marymount, California. And Faber watches the ball go out of bounds. And yet another corner kick coming up. Andrea Faber, the co calpac Conference Player of the Week, the, the reigning co-player of the week. In fact, the other co-player of the week is Kayla Cisneros of Menlo College. A turnaround shot opportunity there by Nash, blocked. Another kick, and that one goes wide right. I, I tell you what, you, got, you do have to give tip your hat to Simpson. They've been up against it this whole first half, yet haven't allowed a goal. Not really the style of play you want to be attempting but so far, they're still in this game. Uh, Jenna Fisher will have the corner kick for Marymount, California. It's on the ground and goes right past a couple of players, now towards the goal mouth. That was wide left anyway. So that one wouldn't have, have even come close. And, you know, some fans are may not know the difference between a shot and a shot on goal. Basically, any kind of shot towards the goal mouth it becomes a shot on goal if the ball would have gone into the net had the goalkeeper not been there in front of it. And that's usually the, the difference in the stats uh, between shots and shots on goal in soccer. A little um, difference as well in college soccer. For starters, the scoreboard is the official clock. The referee can stop the clock just like they do in American football. And a player can leave a match and come back later, whereas the international and Major League Soccer level, you know, you, you come out, you're done for the night. Uh, chase for the ball, but it's not going to be in, in time. One of the things that Courtney Mosley said that um, some of the players kind of earned their keep, and so they're getting a chance to participate in this game tonight, though it looks like very, very much some of the, the same players we've seen so far this season. Maybe Coach Mosley just waiting for a little bit of a cushion on the scoreboard before she goes deep on into her bench. Ball turned around and moved by DeHoop. But now possession back over to Marymount, California. Dangerous turnover. Intercepted by Lamori. Yeah, the ball finally kicked over to Jasmine Jimenez. And there's been a few times where Marymount's just gone a little careless with the ball. Very fortunate. And right in front of us, we see O'Halloran and, and our number one mystery player for MCU. We'll again double check on the numbers later. Ball to Loya. Loya asking for it from her teammate, but a sliding tackle. Nice job to put the ball out of bounds by Adriana Hedrick. Hedrick is a 5'9 senior defender from Murphy's, California. And now yet another corner kick for MCU. It was just a throw in on yeah, that. Yeah, throw in, okay. They're over in that corner.
Jimenez gets it over towards Fisher and drops back. And now kicked by the Red Hawks that Jimenez will track down and kick it back to her goalie, Andrea Poschel. Poschel brings it back down into play in a long Dangerous kick break. and a breakaway. And a couple of players going down. That's Fairber for Marymount, California, and gets tangled up with O'Halloran. And Fairber kind of raised up both hands saying, hey, wait a minute, you know, shouldn't that be a penalty kick? But the referee says play on. And From that's exactly what they're going to do. It could have went either way. Yeah, but we we cannot see the uh, actual box, you know, in the, the penalty area. Now the restart on the kick by the Red Hawks. But Loya steals it away, being guarded very closely by Natalie Goins. Beautiful Loya gets move, it over right? on the far side to Maurer. Maddie Maurer uh, kicks it back towards Jenna Fisher. Fisher with a long kick, moves the ball forward. Fairber is over there, also going up against Sochi Sandoval. Twenty minutes and forty-five seconds to play in the first half. Simpson University Red Hawks, Marymount California University Mariners, no score at the StubHub Center in Carson. We're in field number five. In case you're just joining us throughout the broadcast, we know people are the header there. That just went wide right. And Maddie Maurer trying to score for the Mariners. But again, we know that fans are, are tuning in throughout, so if you're with us from the start of the broadcast, we apologize if it sounds like we're saying this so often. But again, if you're just tuning in, the uh, Simpson University Red Hawks in the black uniform, trimmed in red and white, and the California or Marymount California University Mariners in the gold jerseys and navy blue shorts. This one's going to go out of bounds. Dave, again, that last corner kick goes so close with the header opportunity. And you just got to keep asking if you're Simpson, this bend but do not break defense that's going on and yielding all these corner kicks, when is that all going to come to an end? And we're going to see Marymount eventually score a goal. Loya being guarded again by O'Halloran, trying to see if she can turn around and put the ball over in front of the goal mouth. That kind of a loose ball. But now it's Kelsey Nash. Nash is stripped of it, kicks it back over towards Jimenez, and Jimenez puts it over in the far corner. And a shot. They're actually putting the ball right in front of the goal mouth, and nobody was there to finish it off for the Mariners. A perfect opportunity to get on the board. A beautiful cross, and you got to ask yourself, how did that ball get through the sea of bodies, and yet no Marymount player was able to knock that one in? Well, we saw in the first couple of minutes, as you mentioned, both teams kind of filling each other out. And after about four or five minutes, all of a sudden things started to really heat up and a lot of kind of up and down action. Although, again, Mount California doing a good job of keeping the ball on the right hand side of the pitch. This is an artificial turf field, by the way, here at the Sub Hub Center. One of the things about artificial turf versus natural grass is the, the ball on the ground will zip along a little bit faster uh, than it would on natural grass as to be expected, because the uh, a grass surface may not be totally even, whereas uh, all the blades here on artificial turf are. And uh, so sometimes it, it kind of speeds up the action that way, too. Throw in coming up for the Mariners. Some of the Simpson fans nearby trying to say, get it, get it out of there. Move the ball away from the goal. They just really just can't afford to continue playing like this with Marymount just dominating this side of the field. Something drastic, maybe a goal, a fast break opportunity will allow them to gain that cushion. But without that, things are not looking so bright. But I'll give you a good analogy. I heard an analogy in a football game I saw today. It doesn't matter how many yards you give up, it's how many touchdowns you've give, given up. And so far, Simpson hasn't given up the touchdown. Loya with the ball. Has that one kicked away by a defender. 
but they've been giving up plenty of yards. <laughs> well, certainly quite a few corner kicks here for the Mariners in the first half. Be interesting to see where this ball gets placed, Dave. It's going to be low, if it's going to be a more conservative pass back to a defender, or they're going to put this ball in the air and let one of their forwards get up in the air and try to go get it. A couple of substitutions for MCU. Sierra Dorman and Shannon Hornbeck have checked in. And here's the corner kick. And did it go in? Yes, that's yes, a goal. Yes, it did. And it was kind of one of those things where looking at the line, we didn't think it crossed there. That was just right in front. But... MCU gets on the board with 16.28 remaining. Uh, that beautiful corner kick by Monica Fisher. We'll see who actually gets credit for the goal. And it was only a matter of time. Fisher will get an assist. We know that for sure coming off the corner kick. But uh, right now, MCU strikes first. And they lead Simpson University 1-0. Now a throw in coming up by Jasmine Jimenez. And Simpson just continues to shoot themselves in the foot. They had possession to start off there and already turned it over. Yeah, Dorman trying to move the ball forward and it's kicked away. And the fact that uh, Dorman was kind of controlling the ball on the near side, we did not see the players who went out, but it's quite possible that Sierra Dorman came in for Alyssa Loya. Sierra Dorman is a 5'4 sophomore Sophomore forward from Las Vegas, Nevada, a transfer from San Diego Christian College to MCU. And we said Shannon Horbeck uh, checked in as well. She's a 5'6 senior defender from Torrance out of Torrance High School and a transfer from nearby El Camino College. What looked like an opportunity for Simpson yet again, yet another turnover. Just unable really to get anything going. About two thirds of the first half is gone. We've played 30, we have 15 minutes left in this first 45 minute half. Well, we said Loya may have come out, but no, now she has the ball. So Loya did stay in. We were kind of scanning the field before and didn't see her right away. And now Kelsey Nash Try to do something with the ball, but that one's knocked away. And now, almost a one-on-one -on -one break, but Andrea Polschel will come over and pick it up and kick the ball out towards midfield. You talked about scanning the field, not being able to see Loya, not called a few men's game, not really used to seeing the long hair on the back of the jersey covering up the numbers. I was going to say, yeah, sometimes the ponytails uh, do cover up the numbers, and... You have to kind of wait until that changes a little bit. And there's a shot on goal that's wide right. By our mystery player. Yeah, the, the one. other player that was over there was Alyssa Loya. And I almost thought it was, was going to be a pass to Loya and let Loya take a shot at the goal. But now the ball being kicked back into play. Beautiful cross by Loya. And yet another corner kick for Marymount. Yeah, that was a close call. Sierra Dorman had a shot at it. This looks like it's going to be Monica Fisher again going to what worked last time. Yeah, Fisher already with an assist tonight. And her last corner kick found the back of the net. And that's where we stand right now with... The Marymount, California Mariners leading the Simpson Redhawks 1-0. Corner kick up in the air, a couple of attempts to head it in, but actually came out. Now Nash was trying to take a shot at it and trying to take another shot, and that one's blocked and goes out of bounds. You'll see, that might have been uh, no, it was Jenna Fisher who took that. I thought for a second it was a lawyer waiting for the players to turn around. No, it was Jenna Fisher, and she looked like she might have been fouled on that or complaining about a possible handball. Couldn't really see from our angle. But regardless, 
Monica Fisher yet again, another corner kick for Marymount, California. On the ground, and shot just went up high. I think that was Alyssa Loya once again, just barely over the crossbar. Uh, a couple of substitutions. One of the players coming in is Rebecca Messer for Simpson University. And of course, she was one of our pregame interviews. And the reason why, Rebecca Messer, a 5'2 junior midfielder from San Pedro. And she played soccer her senior year at San Pedro High School. So we see that a lot where players from Southern California go to Northern California schools and Northern California players end up on SoCal rosters. So Rebecca Messer into the game right now and her fan club just sitting to the right of us. And they erupted when she entered the game. It's definitely got to be a good feeling for her to come back home and enter this game and play in front of her hometown fans. Yeah, you know, one of these days, and we've had a chance to interview players from, you know, this area on, on other rosters and other schools and different sports and whatever. But I, I always wonder how weird does it feel? You, you come down here, you're maybe even getting a chance to, you know, stay at home in your own bed as opposed to a hotel room. And, uh, in fact, actually, Rebecca Messer did come separately from the team today. And then at the same time, you come out here, and you're not the home team. You're the visiting team. I, I know for myself personally, and I haven't experienced it, but I think for me personally, it would kind of feel kind of weird. Without a doubt. I think some of the pluses are, like you mentioned, being able to sleep in your own bed. Maybe some of the minuses is you have your old friends asking you, what, what are you doing? What are you hang Let's hang out. Let's get back well, together. I think, I think you come down and it, it's really a, a pretty much, you know, business type uh, meeting or a business, you know, playing soccer. You know, for Simpson, one of the things we haven't mentioned and we have to kind of worry about, you know, their legs tonight, so to speak, is the fact that they just played a match 24 hours ago. So a lot of times, you know, you might play uh, just, for example, on a Thursday, you have Friday off, you play again Saturday, as in a, and you get a, a day off. Here, you know, they played 24 hours ago, and now 24 hours later, you know, here they are again. And so that's something to watch for, especially in the second half, uh, to see how tired they may look as we go along. As we're under 10 minutes remaining in the first half, and Marymount, California with a 1-0 lead over Simpson. A couple players there. Loya is over there, but trying to do something with the ball, Sierra Dorman. Boy, Dorman jumping up and down through defenders. Yeah, she was kind of like weaving her way. But you mentioned Simpson playing within 24 hours of this matchup tonight. I haven't had the privilege of watching them early on in the year, but maybe an explanation for some of the lack of energy we've seen in this first half. Well, it could be, especially on the part of, of Simpson, although I think to Simpson's credit, I mean, they, they've kind of chased after every open ball, and the Mariners, you know, they, they've had like 48 hours in between matches, and so for them it's, it's maybe a little bit more, more, you know, a little more rested. I also wonder, too, and this comes up, you know, maybe with the other fields in the conference, how many of them are artificial turf and how often do you play on natural grass? If you are not used to artificial turf and especially the speed of the ball, that may affect you as opposed to natural grass. That's one of those questions that really doesn't have a definitive answer, but it's something that you, you know, certainly ponder. But one of the things we've noticed, except for maybe two exceptions, uh, possibly three at the most, it's basically been all MCU. Simpson has really not had, again, those two or three maybe, maybe major attempts to try to get a shot or a shot on goal. A first half stats will be very interested, uh, interested reading to see basically, you know, how many shots that Marymount has had and how many has Simpson. But the beauty of this whole first half is as poorly as Simpson has played, yet only down one goal. Yes. So very capable of getting a goal, turning things around. It just really takes one play for Simpson to get right back into this. O'Halloran with the ball marked off of by O'Halloran and the throw in by Jimenez. Goes over to Fisher. 
Fisher kicks it over to the far side. And if you're Marymount, how much longer before you score another goal? It's pretty dangerous to let Simpson hang around here with just a one goal deficit. Definitely want to put another one on the scoreboard before the first half ends. Mara knocked over one of the Simpson players, but nothing there. In fact, I think she got tangled up with uh, Marika De Hoop. Jimenez with the throw in for the Mariners. Uh, one of the things that we can say as DeHoop trying to move the ball, but it goes out of bounds near the Marymount, California bench, is the fact that even though there's a couple of shots and a couple of breakaways by MCU, Simpson is there to try to kick it away and, and just do whatever they can. Forget about, you know, offense. They're basically playing prevent defense. Yeah, so they're that bend but do not break defensive strategy. I really think if Simpson ju could just string together four or five consecutive passes, they can maybe turn this game around, but really every time they get possession, they just really shoot themselves in the foot. Jimenez to Loya, and that one's going to be knocked out of bounds. Doberman just grabbing her head, frustrated, thought she should have retained possession of that. And maybe get a shot on goal. That was some good defensive play by Rebecca Messer. A moment ago, we were waiting for her to finally turn around again with the uh, ponytails. Now Jimenez comes over to the near side to Loya. That's a Loya, a nice move around a defender. Still. Possession the ball. Beautiful moves by Loya, just shaking defenders and left and right. And the shot is wide left. That one looked like it might curve a little bit. Maybe that was the whole idea, but it didn't quite get the bend in the air. I thought they had a chance of sneaking in from our perspective. But we've talked about the local girl, Rebecca Messer. Imagine if she scores a goal tonight, how crazy her fans are going to go. Oh, absolutely. You know, and that brings up an interesting point about some of these players. I mean, we're talking about, you know, the leading goal scorers for Simpson, Natalie Goins with three goals, also Marika DeHoop and Brittany Garrison with three goals, and Nicole Goins has two. But yet a very quiet night for all of those Simpson players as they've been playing defense a majority of this first sure. half. Sierra Dorman with the ball. I just throw it over, kick it over to the far side, and it's going to be knocked away by the Red Hawks. Tracking it down, Maddie Maurer. Maurer pushes it forward, but kicked away O'Halloran. Free ball. Who's going to control it? And going over there first is Kelsey Nash. You know, the problem with the defense, prevent defense is the fact that you know, you've run into a problem as far as you're so busy trying not to uh, give up any more goals that you, you know, use up a lot of time on the clock. 3.45 to play in the first half. Again, 1-0 in favor of Marymount, California. Loya and O'Halloran chasing after the ball. And I also think that if you're playing defense the majority of the time, there's a rhythm that goes with sports like basketball and soccer and a feel for the ball. If you're constantly on defense, you really don't have that ball handling feels. We get a, another close opportunity for Marymount. You know, it was a, just a, a throw in just to our right and Loya was going to take it and then Jimenez came over and there's a smile on Loya like, okay, you do it. <laughs> you know, I, I think part of that smile just express the joy they have of being out here, playing with your teammates, playing with your friends. And another corner kick coming up for the Mariners. And I think, Rob, I think you're right. By the time the first half is over, probably double figures and corner kicks. And ball kicked out of bounds. 
And Dave, you touched on the joy that Loya is playing with. I think having fun in sports isn't emphasized enough. I think it almost gets too serious nowadays. Oh, absolutely. We put too much pressure on our coaches, too much pressure on our players and our kids. Yeah, why play if you're not having fun? Exactly. Aloya, I just move that forward. Get another offensive opportunity and a little kick. That might, might be a shot on goal. Might have gone in had it not been picked up by Natasha Webb, the goalkeeper for Simpson, the 5-5 senior. Andrea Polschel, meanwhile, I think she's just trying to stay awake at the other end. She's not had too much to do here in the first half as the goalkeeper for Marymount, California. You know, kind of check the newspaper, drink a latte. <laughs> check her email. Check her email, all those things, because almost all the action in the first half has happened on the right side of the pitch. Now Jenna Fisher with the ball, taking a shot, but I think also a sliding tackle there to kind of knock it away. Marymount's just getting a season's worth of corner kicks tonight. Yeah, I think Adriana Hedrick was the one that was on the sliding tackle there. And yet another corner kick for Marymount, California. It may be worth asking at halftime, what is the school record for corner kicks? And a header there, but it comes back out. Monica Fisher had the corner kick trying to move it forward, but ball goes out of bounds. She wanted to try to advance it to her teammate, Sierra Dorman. That was a dangerous play. Dorman lowered her head to try to make contact with the ball, yet the Simpson defender lifted her foot to kick the ball away. Almost got kicked in the face. Kick intercepted by Monica Fisher. It's just going to be kicked away by a Simpson Redhawk. I, one of the things I really like about the uh, California Pacific Conference, the nicknames of the different teams, are the California Maritime Academy Keel Haulers. Here we have the Simpson University Red Hawks. We've seen the uh, Soka University of America Lions. Then you have the, the new member of the conference playing very well, the La Sierra University Golden Lion, or Golden Eagles, I should say. Uh, La Sierra Golden Eagles out in Riverside. And now the countdown, and triple zeros on the scoreboard. Halftime on field number five at the StubHub Center in Carson with the score, the Marymount California University Mariners 1 and the Simpson University Red Hawk 0. You're watching NAIA Women's College Soccer right here on the MCU Sports Network. Both teams coming back out onto the Murphy Family Field, otherwise known as field number five here at the StubHub Center in Carson, California. David Smock along with Robert Brayu and our camera operator Robert Linkrum. Great to be with you tonight on the MCU Sports Network as we get set for the start of the second half. And, and Rob, some very interesting stats uh, courtesy of the Sports Information Office at Marymount, California in the first half. MCU with 16 shots to just zero for Simpson. Uh, MCU also had four shots on goal. And, uh, of course, one of those went in as the Mariners are ready to kick off to start the second half. And you made a comment earlier in the first half, Rob, and you were absolutely right on at the rate that the Mariners were going Going in the first half, they were going to be in double figures in corner kicks. And sure enough, 12 corner kicks for Marymount California University in the first half to zero for Simpson. But ironically, it's just a one-goal game as we're underway here in the second half. Again, Simpson University, the Red Hawks in the black uniforms trimmed in red and white, and the Marymount California University Mariners in the gold jerseys, dark blue numerals, and navy blue shorts. That's right, Dave. Statistically, a dominant performance by Marymount California University in that first half. Yet, the one stat that matters is the one on the scoreboard. Only one to nothing so far tonight. Now, in the second half, Marymount California will be going right to left on offense. 
and a shot that hits the side of the net, so was not uh, very close. Well, they did kind of take out the banner over there. <laughs> Again, in goal, first for Simpson University, Natasha Webb, 5'5", five senior from Freeland, Washington. And in goal for the Mariners is Andrea Poschel, Poschel a 6'1", junior goalie from Bakersfield out of Garces Memorial High School. Oh my goodness, Dave, a ball just right off the face of a Simpson forward. She goes down in pain. We'll wait to see if we get a number. Number 12. And that would be DeHoop, Marika DeHoop. Which would be a huge loss for Simpson. She currently tied for the team lead in goals with three this season. And of course, in college soccer, they can make substitutions if they want to give her a chance to. It's, we mentioned it a little bit chilly out here, and you get hit in the face like that with that soccer ball, it's going to sting. Well, you know, it's 70 degrees at kickoff. That was the forecast anyway, 51% humidity, going up to about 54%, but everything is so damp and, and wet. And in fact, it's gotten to the point right now where our binoculars we use sometimes as uh, Fairbur kicks and scores. Andrea, are they going to see Andrea Fairbur with the goal? Perhaps Maddie Maurer with the assist. And it's 2 0 at the 43 14 mark here in the second half. A beautiful kick by Fairbur. Just really just dropping that over and in to the goal, over the head of the keeper. Originally when I saw her kick that ball, I thought that was going over the net, but I beautiful thought so too. That's why, I, that's why I didn't say anything because I thought it was gonna go over the, the crossbar. And I was kind of surprised where all of a sudden it kind of dove in and went right in the uh, back of the net. And I'm probably the most surprised player, uh, besides maybe Andrea Ferber, was uh, the goalie for Simpson, Natasha Webb. I think she thought that might go over too because she never really put a play on that ball thinking that it was going to sail overhead. But now MCU with a 2-0 lead over Simpson and a shot grabbed out of the air by Polschel. And there you see the length of Polschel at 6-1 just able to just snatch that ball out of the air. You know, Sierra Derman. We're going to go head to head with Kendra Kaiserman. That was Simpson's best play so far. That shot that it just took. But yet again, yeah, here Maddie, comes Maddie Maddie Maurer over in the corner. Go, shot goes off of a Red Hawk defender, but she was trying to see if she could put that ball on a quick throw in right in front of the goal mount. And now chasing it down is Monica Fisher. Yeah. Comes to hoop. Yeah, to hoop. And the ball coming over to O'Halloran. O'Halloran and sliding tackle by Jenna Fisher. And O'Halloran a little slow getting up. The throw in coming up. That appears it's going to be Bethany Lynn. And she puts the ball in the play. 5'6 junior defender from Blaine, Washington. And the ball being tracked down after it goes out of bounds by a Mariner. Simpson wasn't going to have a chance on that play anyway. So it's 2-0 in favor of Marymount, California, with 41 minutes and 10 seconds left in regulation. And, of course, the old adage in soccer, the most dangerous sport or score in soccer is 2-0 because you always worry about the other team getting one goal, feeling pretty good about themselves, and then coming back and get the getting the equalizer, but right now a two goal lead for the Mariners as again, MCU trying to control the ball. It was a nice header over there by Ferber. And Loya trying to see if he should do something with it. Stayed inbounds. And now it's gonna be kicked out. 
And Loya may, Loya may be over dribbled there. Should have took a shot on goal when she had the opportunity. Move to O'Halloran. Intercepting is Jenna Fisher. Kicks it back over to Jimenez. And we were talking about our mystery player wearing number one um, tonight on her jersey. And that's Ellen Craparo. Craparo normally wearing number 15, but with these gold jerseys is wearing number one tonight. Ellen Craparo, 5'5", freshman forward from Palos Verdes out of Palos Verdes High School. So Webb putting the ball back into play out near midfield. And Rob, with, with just six minutes gone, no, we're actually a little more than five minutes gone here in the second half, one of the things is kind of picking up where they left off. Uh, the Mariners trying to dominate and keep the ball in the attacking half of the pitch. And they're kind of pretty much doing that same thing right here. And that second goal was pivotal for Marymount, giving them an extra cushion on the scoreboard. Really, in the first half, you had the feeling that they were letting Simpson hang around and that Simpson was a little bit dangerous. You know, it would only take one play for Simpson to get back into this, but now with a two-nil lead and 39 minutes to go, Marymount, California in the driver's seat. Well, of course, with a win tonight, you get three points for a win, and the dangerous ball cleared away. So Mackenzie Collard, well, it's going to be a throw in for Simpson. Ball quickly kicked out of bounds by Dorman. So the officials talking about maybe some of the fans. There's not a lot of room here as far as folks Giants sometimes being close, and now I think they're going to talk maybe down to our left about some players clearing out. Right now the players kind of catching their breath a little bit. You know, they don't really get timeouts in soccer, so that kind of a good one there. Dorman again kicking the ball out of bounds. Another out-of-bounds ball. Slowly moving the ball down the field. Yeah, quick throw in by Bethany Len. And O'Halloran trying to be an offensive threat for the Red Hawks. But going to be a nice defense by MCU and the ball back to Andrea Polschel. Polschel, we were kind of kidding and jest in the first half, did not have a lot to do kind of read the newspaper, check her email, et cetera. And we said that in jest, but actually here in the second half so far, she's had a lot more to do. Collard with the ball, moves it forward to Dorman. Dorman trying to put it over towards the goal mouth and trying to come in and maybe get an easy goal is Alyssa Loya, but Natasha Webb, the goalkeeper for Simpson coming up with the ball first. 37 minutes and 14 seconds to play in the second half. MCU 2, Simpson 0. Moving forward is to Hoop. When you talk about some of the players on these two rosters, You have not only a lot of Oregon players for Simpson. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, Marika DeHoop, she's from Klamath Falls, Oregon. But you do have Hannah Dooley, who we have not seen yet in this match. And she's from Marrakech, Morocco. And for MCU, uh, you have a number of, of players, too, from all over, including Andrea Ferber from Zurich, Switzerland. So really one international player on each roster. We know on the men's rosters, we, we see a lot of international players. And a shot, if they're going to count that before the whistle blew, that actually would be the first official shot in the game for Simpson. And looks like it's going to be a Marymount corner kick. 
Marymount switching things up with Fairbear looking to attempt the corner kick. And cleared away, trying to track it down for the Mariners is Kelsey Nash. Ball still in play. And goal. another goal for MCU. A lot of bodies in front of the goal mouth. But with 35-26 remaining, it is now 3-0. And I'll be honest, we have no idea who scored that. Kelsey Nash on the assist. Oh, was it Nash on the assist? Okay. With the cross. And we talked about the whole first half. Marymount knocking on the door. Simpson, bend but do not break. Well, with 35 minutes to go in the second half, you could pretty much say that Simpson defense is now broken as Marymount has stretched the lead out to three to nothing. Well, and again, it, you know, as we mentioned at the start of the second half, the fact that, you know, Simpson did not have a shot on goal or a, a shot period in the first half, you know, playing that prevent defense, as, you know, we call it. Yeah, if you had looked at the stats in the first half, you really wouldn't believe the score. Now the score mirroring the statistical difference in the ball game. A throw in for the Mariners, coming in intended for Dorman over there on defense. Uh, Kendra Kaiserman, a 5'6 sophomore midfielder from Manteca, California. And we see a substitution coming in. That's 19, Alexandra Patterson in for number five, Adriana Hendrick on Simpson. Yeah, Patterson, a 5'5 senior defender from Cameron Park, California. And I'll be honest, with a lot of moisture in the air. Can we use the binoculars anymore? They're kind of done for the night. It won't focus. We we'll try to look at some of these players on the far side. Now Natasha Webb with the kick to put the ball back into play near midfield. Nice header there by Maddie Maurer and Loya trying to track it down. I, I will say one thing. You can certainly see the blue numbers on the yellow jerseys. The, the red numbers outlined in white on the black jerseys for Simpson after a while become a little bit of a, a, a tough uh, thing to see and, and be definitive about it. Again, a shot. That's going to be grabbed by Webb on the fly. It's a nice play by Webb to charge that ball, not let it approach her, and let a Marymount player deflect that. Jenna Fisher with the ball trying to clear it out. Now Monica Fisher. Fisher will get the ball back from Collard. Fisher along this near sideline right in front of our broadcast location to Dorman. Beautiful Kick give and go. ahead by Nash, and now it's a foot race. Dorman trying to see if she can take the ball from the corner and put it in front of the goal mouth, being very closely guarded, and both players going down. I think it was Kaiserman on defense for Simpson. Yeah, 32 minutes and 52 seconds left in regulation. Yet the game ends after 90 minutes in a tie. Then they'll play two 10-minute overtime periods, and if it remains tied after that, then the match will go into the record books as a draw. Another corner kick for MCU and a little header. That was Maddie Maurer with a beautiful header off the beautiful ball placement by Andrea Faber. Yeah, an opportunity there, but they couldn't quite convert. Now Collard trying to chase after the ball, so is... Jenna Fisher, Fisher comes up with it. Takes it over in the, the middle to Jimenez as the Mariners trying to see if they can get the ball back over in the left-hand side of the pitch on attack, this time having to fall back on defense. You, know, you get the, the feeling, Rob, and I could be totally wrong and probably am, but you get the feeling that Simpson's playing just well enough that, you know, they may sneak a goal in, but, you know, being down 3 nothing, 3-1 still doesn't do much for you. Yeah, I, I still think it's important for them to have momentum in closing the season and continuing conference play to play well here in the final 30 minutes and really do their best to get a shot on goal or score a goal will do wonders for their confidence moving forward. Monica Fisher was trying to move that ball, being guarded by Kaiserman. Kaiserman and Collard. Collard will win that battle. 
Moves the ball over on the far side to Kelsey Nash. Nash kicks it back over towards the MCU bench. And three goals already on the night for the Mariners, trying to see if they can get number four. As we're under the 31 minute mark here in the second half, the Marymount California University Mariners three and the Simpson University Red Hawks zero. And again, in case you're just tuning in on the MCU Sports Network, Simpson in all black uniforms trimmed in red and white. Another corner kick for the Mariners. And I think that went, went now, to the back of the net. Yeah, and that, uh, if it's sometimes an optical illusion, but it was not that close to being a goal. But again, like I said, Simpson in the black uniforms trimmed in red and white. Marymount, California in the yellow jerseys, blue numerals, and dark navy blue shorts. And Simpson trying to see if they get something going here, trying to move the ball forward. Oh, nice interception and a kick by Monica Fisher. Again, Simpson just hasn't been able to string together four or five clean passes. It just really hasn't allowed them to get any offensive momentum. And of course, in these situations, even with MCU on defense, what it does for you, if you're a Mariner, is the fact that you're up 3-0 and you're taking time off the clock. But again, now on attack mode, on offense, the MCU Mariners. A high ball, trying to look for an opportunity to get a goal, but that one just kind of went left of the goal mouth. And finally, he kicked out of bounds. <laughs> David Smock and Robert Brayu, along with our camera operator, Robert Linkrum. Great to be with you tonight on the MCU Sports Network, our first match of the season under the lights. It does give you a totally different perspective uh, versus the day game. Without a doubt, the LA Knights as many college football teams like to call it when they have their night games, but it's a little different. You know, the day games, early games we've been accustomed to, what time of day you're playing, being able to sleep in, the times you practice as well, it's all on your body clock. Yeah, we've had some games, you know, that actually have kicked off late morning. And, you know, here we have a, an evening game. And the ball's gonna go out of bounds right in front of our location. Quick throw in by O'Halloran. And O'Halloran will kick it over to the far side after getting the ball back from Goins. And now a nice kick away by Jenna Fisher. Another shot. And I think that one would be a shot on goal. That would be the yes. first of the night officially for Simpson. So all of a sudden, Simpson, they're still playing this game as if it was 1-0, which was the score at halftime, or better yet, no score at all. In, mentally in, in their minds. They're still fighting and grinding away, and it'll be a corner kick coming up. I believe this is their first corner kick tonight. And the ball and a couple of hops handled by Polschel. But that's a positive for Simpson, and of course, they're trying to build right now for their next game and the rest of the season. Yeah, that was their first corner kick of the night. And right before that, their first shot, and their first shot on goal after not having anything like that. And there's a shot by the Mariners, but I think they're gonna say it was offsides anyway, so it wouldn't have, have counted had it gone in. I couldn't quite see if it had gone in I or believe not. that went behind the net, they, hit the side, but again, not 100% certain by any means. Yeah, our broadcast location, we're, we're sitting here on the sidelines, so we have no elevation. And you're, Generally, if you're up high in a press box, you get a much better perspective on, on some of those things. So yeah, at, at times, uh, Rob, like you and I are suggesting here, we have to kind of speculate what we think is happening. You, as a viewer at home, you get to see the action a lot clearer from a different angle than we do. I want to say I'm almost certain that went behind the net because we didn't see any Marymount, California players celebrating. Yeah, I was going to say, that's usually the tip-off that a goal is scored is uh, the ladies will be jumping up and down. So this is going to be a throw-in for the Mariners. 
cleared out for the moment by Simpson. Again, Simpson University located in Redding, California. And for Marymount California University, their Ocean View campus in Rancho Palos Verdes, California. They also have a waterfront campus in San Pedro, California. And then their Lakeside campus, that's in the small town of Lucerne in Lake County up in Northern California. Formerly known as Marymount College, but now this year, the change taking place on August 1st, 2013. First year, the athletic teams are known as Marymount California University. The other reason for the change was the fact that MCU is now offering master's degrees for the first time, and usually a lot of colleges will change their name to include university in the official title. Oh, off the right upright. Dave, all I heard was Lakeside, Oceanside, any Marymount and campus, maybe. you really can't go wrong. Yeah, o Ocean View, Waterfront, and Lakeside. Redding, California, I, I've been there, although it's been a while since I visited. Nice community. The only problem is Redding, for about four months out of the year, it's about 100 degrees every day. Uh, another opportunity there, but that went wide on the feed. 24 minutes and 42 seconds, and the clock continuing to run down here, although now it has stopped momentarily by the referee. Again, that's the big change that you have in college soccer. The referee can stop the clock and restart it again. And it's going to be another corner kick, 12 of them in the first half by MCU. Collard trying to move the ball forward, gets it over to Fisher, and a oh. chance there. And another goal for MCU. So 24-14 to play. MCU, they're starting to open this one wide open at 4-0. Dave, I'm going to go ahead and officially coronate this night, MCU corner kick night. Yeah, if, they, if they're not, you know, again, uh, about a third or fourth year program, if, if 12 corner kicks in the first half, and we're probably up to about 15 or 16 now, if that's not a school record, it has to be close to one. As Mackenzie Collard with a quick throw in for MCU to Nash back to Collard. Collard trying to move the ball deep. Gets the feed back from Dorman to Collard. Oh, now they're just playing give and go Dorman there. Back to Collard. Yeah, moving closer to trying to put that ball in front of the goal mouth. Again, and a very important three points, and at least for the time being, should they win this game, the Mariners would be in a tie for first place, depending on some of what the other games that take place in the conference. It's one of those things where it's kind of fluid. Seven soccer teams on the women's side Four of them, four out of the seven, will qualify for the California Pacific Conference Soccer Tournament. And that'll be held again in Prescott, Arizona, hosted by Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. Embry-Riddle's women's team quite possibly may be one of those four teams participating. Now, quick little fast break here, going left to right, the Simpson Redhawks. And long shot. And that one's going to go wide right. I had the feeling though that Simpson just really failed to keep their poise on that drive. Really took a shot on goal too early. That was Natalie Goins. And now Andrea Poschel, the keeper for MCU, will kick the ball. Actually kind of a short kick. I don't know if she was trying to get it out to center circle or not. But another offensive opportunity here, unless MCU can clear the ball. Indeed, that appears to be the case. Nash kicking it down long. And MCU is showing no signs of slowing things down. Yeah, D Dorman was trying to get to it, but it went out of bounds as it went beyond the goal line. And 
I think there's going to the official well, he has his hand up, but they're going to basically say play on. I thought maybe for a moment they were trying to bring in some substitutions. Yeah, subs, but I don't see any players over there waiting to come into the match. 21 minutes and 17 seconds, counting down here in the second half. And now 4-0 to zero in favor of MCU over Simpson. And the Red Hawks, again with another offensive opportunity and just couldn't catch up to the ball was Leah O'Halloran, the 5'3 sophomore from Newburgh, Oregon. She was in the best position to try to get a shot on goal, but couldn't do so. You know, ball kicked away, nice job there by Faber. Comes over the near side, headed by Fisher. Despite the fact that Simpson's yielded more goals in the second half, you do have to say that offensively, it's been a better performance and improvement over the first half. Absolutely, Simpson, you know, we've been coming a moment ago, almost treating the, this match or this second half as if the, it was a scoreless game, you know, where in fact, the Mariners lead Simpson 4-0. Monica Fisher, with the ball trying to get it over to Dorman. And that one's gonna be out of bounds. And now a couple of substitutions will be coming in for MCU. So Ellen Craparo and Shannon Hornbeck will come in. We'll take over for Dorman and I believe that's Fisher going to the MCU bench. Quick throw in by Collard. Nash, back over in the corner. And Nash getting the feed again from Collard, trying to play that game of possession to get that towards the goal mouth. And this one's gonna go beyond the goal line and yet another MCU corner kick coming up well at this point on this very humid night in terms of humidity we can't really use the binoculars anymore that we have to follow what's going on but a header there as grabbed out of the air by Natasha Webb but a good opportunity for the Mariners to get goal number five tonight Tell you what, I'm really impressed with how hard MCU is still playing. It's always a trait of a well-coached ball club is how hard, oh my goodness, again. And just going wide right was Fairbear. Yeah, now Fairbear trying to get another one, the native of Zurich, Switzerland. She said in our pregame interview that she went to a, basically a, a showcase or tryout camp in London, England, and uh, was liked by the previous head coach at Marymount, Marymount College then, and there she is playing college soccer in Southern California. And Dave, I want to go back to the point about second year head coach Courtney Mosley and her impact on this team. They won't let me as they continue to try to score goals, but one of the traits of a well-coached team, and you see it across all sports, is how hard they continue to play while they're up. You see a lot of teams fold in, Maybe less activity, less enthusiasm, not with MCU tonight. Yeah, I think we were making the comment earlier that Simpsons treating this game as if it's it's scoreless. And probably to follow up on your point, uh, well worth mentioning that actually Marymount, California, they're treating as if this is a scoreless game as well. You know, instead of being up 4-0, here's Creparo. She was trying to get the ball to Ferber. Ferber's still with it. And Ferber trying to... Got a shot, but decides to kick it over to the far side. I was a little surprised Fairbairn didn't try to take a shot on goal. I thought she was going to. I was a little surprised. Well, now Fairbairn has the... And there's Fairbairn's shot. And a goal by Fairbairn on the feed by Ellen Creparo. Well, maybe she finally got the ball in the position where she wanted it. And with 17-11 to play, it's now 5-0 in favor of Marymount, California over Simpson. And that was... I think that's patience and trusting your teammates. Ferber's goal on the feed from Creparo. And again, with that goal, Ferber kind of you know, highlighting the reason why she is the co 
Cal Pack Conference Women's Soccer Player of the Week. Might make it back-to-back -back weeks if she could keep up this pace. Well, despite a, a loss in their last six games and winning you know, five out of six, one of the things we really didn't have a chance to mention was simply the fact that the Mariners, for the first time this year, actually received some votes in the NAIA Top 25 poll. And, of course, they downed uh, then nationally ranked number 21 Cal State San Marcos. In fact, that loss... 1-0 uh, win on the goal by Sierra Dorman. That 1-0 win over San Marcos dropped the Cal State San Marcos Cougars from number 21 to number 25. So uh, a good win tonight. Maybe they'll get some more votes or even sneak in somewhere in that top 25 poll for the first time in 2013. And they're going to get their opportunity to play their way into the top 25. And really what it's going to come down to is how well they improve and play on the road. And right now, so far this season, uh, the road's been a little bit of a problem for the Mariners. You know, Marymount, California, they're on their way to being 7-2 and two at home, but they're only 1-3 and three away from their home pitch, whether it be field number 5 here or even field number 7 at the StubHub Center in Carson. And that's going to have to change if they really, really want to contend and call themselves a top 25 team. And we've said before, trademarks of good teams are how well they play while they're ahead, but also how well they play on the road. A couple of substitutions into the game now. And Rob, you can probably see a little bit better at night than I can, so I don't know if you can pick up some of those players who have come in. Unfortunately, Dave, I could not. Yeah, as if they come by here a little bit closer, a lot of this action has been kind of on the far side of the field in the left-hand side of the pitch in the second half. MCU taking their time, putting the ball back into play as we're down to 14 minutes and 39 seconds remaining. And now MCU with a 5-0 lead. And it's really, the play on the field has been even more dominant than what's on the scoreboard, considering they dominated that first half, yet only had one goal, whereas the second half, really, the goals have just come in bunches. Oh, an opportunity there, the follow-up. And I think Ferber was almost <laughs> getting an opportunity for goal number two here in, in the match. One positive for Simpson has been the play of the keeper, Natasha Webb. I know MCU has five goals, but they've been extremely aggressive. So many corner kicks, shots on goals, but she did a great job there defending that corner kick, getting high up in the air and snatching that ball away from the Marymount, California offensive players. I think the question right now is not who will win the match, but what the final score will be as... Marymount, California ahead 5-0. And this is the last game of a seven-game homestand, their longest of the year. And they have a good opportunity here to go, you know, 6-1. and one. That's 18 valuable points that you pick up on your home pitch. As with the ball, it's Shannon Hornbeck who gives it to Mackenzie Collard. Collard over to Craparo. Craparo back to Collard. Collard trying to track it down, being guarded very closely by Chelsea Cormack. Graparo, again with the ball, trying to move forward towards the middle of the field. Give it to Maddie Maurer, and might have a little shot there, but not even close to going into the net. Yeah, really just a wall of defenders. She was unable to penetrate with the ball there. As we see now, yet another corner kick for MCU on the official MCU corner kick night. Yeah, 12 in the first half, probably about six now. And I, I'm about ready to say this, in a, in a young program like this, this really pretty much has to be uh, a school record for corner kicks. And I think that's what this game is going to be remembered 
is because all the corner kicks that the Mariners have had tonight. Who's ball? Dorman and a little shot wide right by the Mariners. Under 12 minutes to play. MCU in firm control of this one. The Mariners leading Simpson University 5-0. And I think really, again, in these final 12 minutes, it's very important for Simpson to try to get something going, some momentum for the rest of the season. And we know why MCU is playing so hard. You mentioned seven straight at home. Really think head coach Courtney Mosley getting her team ready for the upcoming task ahead. Oh, there's a shot there, but it was went wide left. And it looks like that was taken by Fairbrother again. Clock continuing to tick down, 11.07, 11.06, 11.05 remaining here in the second half. Ball going again beyond the touch line, out of bounds. We call it sideline for a lot of sports, kind of going with the American football terminology. The ball, Matty Maurer, Maurer of the shot. And that one just went over the crossbar. We had to wait for a second, though, because it almost looked like it was going to go in. But again, from our position, kind of get an optical illusion of what goes in and, and what's just a, a, a close miss. Yeah, Maddie shot that one out of a cannon. She really tried to just oh, frozen rope that one in, really wasn't going for so much touch on that shot on goal. I'll be honest, until we, we saw it kind of go over the crossbar, I really thought it was going to sneak in there. Again, MCU on offense and another... Scoring opportunity, perhaps there's Dorman, but tracking down the ball is Creparo. Gets it over in the near side to Collard. Collard in front of the goal mouth and headed away by one of the Red Hawks. Come with them, Jenna Fisher. Gets it over to Mackenzie Collard, and it goes beyond the touchline. We've called Collard's name a lot tonight, doing a nice job. A uh, 5 4 junior midfielder from Torrance out of. North Torrance High School and a transfer from Los Angeles Harbor College. Jenna Fisher, the ball over on the far side to Jasmine Jimenez. We talked about Jimenez a lot, but not really called her name very much here in the second half. And you now a collision involving Andrea Poschel and one of the Simpson Redhawks, but I think it was De Hoop. Yeah, I do, but fortunately getting up rather quickly and staying on in the match. Offensive chance here for Simpson. We have seen some lackadaisical plays by the MCU defenders and keeper. Well, I'd like to see a little bit more urgency back there protecting the net. Now a couple of substitutions coming on for Simpson. You know, Natalie Goins and number 16, Abby Olson coming in for Goins, a 5'6 senior midfielder from Grants Pass, Oregon. And from, I think it might be Olison, O-L-E-S-E-N, Abby Olison, the 5'6 senior defender from Chester. Quick throw in right in front of our broadcast location by Rebecca Messer out of San Pedro High School playing for Simpson. Battle for physical control. Play. Wow, very physical. And taking exception, Shannon Horbeck, not very happy, almost going to blows with Leo Halloran. And now a yellow card is going to be issued against Shannon Hornbeck. And I think, quite honestly, Hornbeck's lucky that's a yellow and not a red. Yeah, first I think, time tonight I think she, seen... caught, she caught a break that the official was so far away. Really didn't get to see close up. I'm not sure what it was, if it was a punch, slap, or a possible elbow might have been thrown on Well, that. yeah, I think what happens, you, you get kind of frustrated in this situation, and even though MCU is up, I, I guess maybe the feeling that, well, that's kind of interesting, after the, the yellow card, Jenna Fisher will have the restart for Marymount, California. Normally, you get a yellow card, the other team will have the restart, but here Fisher will put the ball back into play. 
And really in a game where the score is 5 nothing, that's not necessary. Now, here's here's the thing. We said that the yellow was, was an arm back. It very well could have been against MCU. Or, I'm sorry, versus Simpson, Simpson. I should say. Yeah, and you're correct. It could have went either way. Really and, choppy play on both ends. Yeah, and the reason I, I mention that is simply the fact that the Mariners had the restart. And normally, when you have a yellow card of considered a foul, the other team starts. So that yellow card may not have been on Hornback. It said it may have been charged to Simpson. And a little shot there, almost their second shot on goal of the night, handled easily by Polschel, and the shot by Chelsea Cormack, the 5'4 senior midfielder from Kern Valley, California. Al Dorman with the ball, trying to move it forward for MCU. Seven minutes and 49 seconds remaining. And a 5-0 to zero lead for Marymount, California over Simpson University. And if you're Simpson, you got to consider that shot by Cormac a win. Just getting that close and getting that shot off. You're really just really reaching for any sort of positives out of this match. So the ball will be kicked back into play. You know, they must really feel that Webb's leg is not maybe as strong as, as some of the other players as Collard pushing the ball forward. Gets it over to Creparo, now in the corner to Ferber, and Ferber's going to go down. All Raymond California wants right now is to kind of keep that clock moving and get closer to the end of the match. 5-0 you know, lead. And in fact, it was interesting, you know, for fans who didn't see the first half, it was only 1-0 at halftime. I mean, four of these five goals in this match have come all in the second half, starting at the 42-43 the mark, all the way down to 17-11. So you're talking about a 25-minute period, four goals by the Mariners. Yeah, Simpson just kind of lingered around in that first half and eventually just too much MCU corner kicks, too many shots on goal, too much MCU just domination of the statistics, time of possession, and eventually the floodgates opened as we now have a 5 nothing MCU lead. Collard will have another throw in, or maybe not. Some of the fans down in the corner blocking our view, so we're not 100% sure, but it's all put back into play off of Kelsey Nash. Mariners trying to see if they get another one here. Matty Maurer now trying to be tracked down on the other side by Monica Fisher. And another yellow card issued. And we've got a down player for Marymount, California. That's Sierra Dorman, 5'4 sophomore from Las Vegas. Yeah, Dorman, a transfer from San Diego Christian College to Marymount, California. That would be a real shame for anyone really to get nicked up or hurt in this final four well, minutes. And, and that's the, the worry that you have. You're, you're driving towards one of those four playoff berths, and you kind of have to play your regulars and at the same time hold your breath if you're Courtney Mosley and hope that none of your players end up being injured. Here's a nice run by Cormac, and coming over on defense is Shannon Hornbeck. Hornbeck with the throw in for the Mariners into Jenna Fisher. Fisher pushes the ball forward out towards midfield. Dorman, the high kick and a race coming up with it. Ferber uh, loses possession, but tracking it down is Collard for the Mariners. Collard over to Nash. Nash over to the far corner. I think she was trying to see if she could bend it a little bit. The whole David Beckham phenomena. 
Some of the players, they can do that. We've seen that this season. That's number 13, Alicia Mattingly, checking into the game for Simpson here in the final three and a half minutes. Yeah, 5'7", junior defender from Chester, California. I tell you, with, with players from certain communities in Northern California, you get a quick geography lesson where some of these players are from in Kelsey Nash with the ball, trying to get it over, and does so to Mackenzie Collard. Collard across the goal mouth onto the far side and beyond the goal line. Two minutes and 45 seconds. That's all that's left in this one. And a win will not only give three points to Marymount, California, they would at least for the time being have 15 but they would also get another valuable win here. We'll talk more about that when we get down to the end of the match. Been very impressed with MCU. I tell you what, if you're Simpson, very fortunate this is only five to nothing. Could have very easily have gotten even more out of control. Well, I think a lot of times too, and this probably goes back to the first half with only one goal as Nash trying to move the ball now over on the Near side to Collard, and Collard has the ball kicked out of bounds by Cormac. Collard with the quick throw in. I was going to say, this is the second meeting of the year between these two clubs. You know, MCU won the first one in Reading at Simpson University, and you kind of wonder sometimes, you've already played them once. If, if you're, you know, Dan Anderson, the head coach of Simpson University, do you maybe try to do something a little bit better because you know what MCU can can do or has it been so long since you last played them that really any kind of scouting report you have may not be all that valuable. A little header there off of Jenna Fisher's noggin and now coming over Hornbeck. Uh, I think Hornbeck I'm and Rika Dehu battling. Collard over to Creparo and one minute remaining. I, I think in terms of going the second go around in any conference. I think there's just more familiarity with the teams. And I think the players, regardless if you're the last place team going up against the first place team, are more optimistic in terms of their chances because you have gone up against that team and that really aura or intimidation factor kind of goes out the window. With the ball is Rebecca Messer again out of San Pedro High School, and she moved it down over in the corner to Chelsea Cormack. Well, one of the things for Marymount, California, whether they're men's team or women's team, after the tournament, if they play in the tournament and win, and that is in the playoffs, you're going to see teams you have not seen at all this year. And now the 10-second countdown that is always kind of marking towards the end of a college soccer match and there are triple zeros on the scoreboard final score marymount california university five and simpson university zero and and very quickly rob your impressions of the uh, match overall and uh, in the second half just a st statistically dominant performance by MCU really wasn't that in terms of the scoreboard in the first half but eventually the scoreboard caught up with the stats and we saw MCU pull away some positives to take away for, from Simpson offensively they did play better in the second half but defensively really just broke down in terms of all the pressure quarter kicks and just overall time of possession by MCU so with the win Marymount California they go to five and two in the CalPAC Conference, they win six out of seven uh, home matches here during this uh, longest home stand of the season. They now have 15 points, get three points for a win, at least theoretically for the moment. They are in a first place tie. And for Marymount, uh, they go to seven and two at home. They are one and three, and they have a one game 
streak. And for Simpson, uh, they fall to 0 and 7 in the conference, 2 and 11 on the year. They've turned out the lights here, just some lights behind us. And we'll kind of wrap things up as we conclude our regular season coverage of Marymount California University soccer. Eight matches, all eight wins for the Mariners. And now for Robert Bray and our camera operator, Robert Linkrim, David Smock saying so long from the StubHub Center in Carson, California. Once again, tonight's final score, the MCU Mariners 5, the Simpson Red Hawks 0. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you soon somewhere across America and around the world right here on the MCU Sports Network. Good night, everybody.